Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about data collection. I don't have that much experience um, with this subject as I just finished my student teaching in December and I got my own class in February. Um, but in the short amount of time that I've had, I have gotten to use some form of data collection. Um, for my student teaching, I taught kindergarten and it was virtual. So I found a really neat way to collect data from them was through Google Forms. And it is much like a survey, but you can present it however you want. You can write in big, long words. You can write small, short sentences, however you want to present that information. So this made it easy to collect data from them, as usually a parent was with them that could help them read the question and then answer it. As soon as they answered it, it all came to one spot where I could review it. And this helped out a lot with just answering personal questions, um, just taking up surveys on, do you like red apples better? Do you like green apples better? So then I would immediately have all these answers and then I could tell, okay, we have five who like green, seven who like red, let's make a chart out of it. Let's do some math with it. So it's an easy way to collect data fast and in a way that they would understand it. Now, I didn't really get to teach them exactly everything about the Google Forms, but they did learn a lot of how to use it because we used it a lot during my student teaching. Um, so we went over how to get on there, how to type in our answers, and then how to submit it. And then once it was submitted, it would come to me. And Looney 2008 identifies online surveys as an ideal way to obtain students' feedback on any given topic. Now, since I have that experience with Google Forms, I would love to use that in the future as well. If we're on a Chromebooks or anything like that, it's a really quick and super easy way to get data from the students. Um, and now I have my own classroom that I got in February, and we have this thing called PowerSchool, which is where we put all the grades. And you put your grades in and then it will automatically give you their sum total, like their average grade. So it's easy for me to just go on there and get a quick look at who's getting it, who may need some extra help, who's falling really low, who's doing really well. And it's just a really easy, quick way to see an overview of their grades. Now, along with the average of the grades, it also gives you a spreadsheet of every individual grade that they make. So... I can see, okay, well, in the month of March, they were doing kind of low on some literacy tests, and then I see their grades improving, and I see this all on one screen. So it's really helpful in collecting data and observing my students. I can also look back, and I, when I give tests or any kind of assessment, I put the grades in as I grade them, and then I have it. So if I see that everyone scored really low, I can think, hmm, maybe I should go back and reteach that subject. Or if everyone did super good, then okay, well maybe we can, we're good, we can move on. If there's one person who's not doing as well, I know that I may need to pull them for some one-on-one -on -one small group time. Um, Rob Lear in Huge 2018 state that with adequate anal <coughs> analysis skills, teachers who have timely access to student achievement data can analyze it to determine learning gaps and proficiencies among students. So with this type of spreadsheet that is used in my own district, it's really helpful in collecting data. And it's really, that's not something that I could really teach my students because that's for um, teachers, but they do have it for parents. So the parents can go on there and see a quick overview of how well their student or their child is doing. Um, but with the Google Forms, I definitely would like to incorporate that into my future classrooms um, and it's just an easy way to get everyone's responses in a timely manner. Thanks.